Welcome back, everybody, to Lost in Postulation. As always, I'm Nicola Volpi, and I am joined by a professional accentologist. <laughs> it's Neil Fitzpatrick. That is a job I would not say no to. Jeez. Imagine That's something. And there are people who do it. There are people whose job uh, is to consult actors, on, like accent coaches, basically. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they don't go by accentologist, but geez, that would be a serious job. Yeah. I would love it. For you, I mean, you would be able to make one of your hobbies. Your life's one of my pastimes, one of my top hobbies. And you would think I would be very good at it if for someone who spends so much time on it. And I don't think I am. Ah, I just, you're better eh, than you let on. Uh, maybe. But there are some that I really enjoy. But, uh, for example, I've never been able to actually do a convincing American accent, despite my best efforts and everything. You know, because I, I can't be specific. Like generic American. Yeah, yeah okay. I wish I could, but I just can't, like, quite nail it. Every, any American I tried on, they're like... Is this it? Is this the accent? Like you, know, they, you they, used to do quite a good Brooklyn back in the day, if I remember. Uh, yeah, geez, that takes me back. Uh, Johnny Como, no, Johnny uh, Como, yeah, and Danny Majora. We'll have to explain that one yeah. <laughs> sooner or later. It's a deep cut. That is a deep cut. But thank you for the honor of being an accentologist. Wow, that is. Uh, that's but special. what are some of your favorites while we're on the topic? Oh man, there's no, there's many which you know, say 20 years ago, I would have done, which you, if I did today would get me cancelled, right? So it's oh. like, you know, this is me as a child, as a, on, and forgive me, listener, for being a child, you know, like this, this is the kind of stuff, you know, and there was a TV show uh, in Ireland and the UK called Little Britain, which again, if it of came course. out today, it would be cancelled on the spot today. If it came, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was it that? It's deeply mm. problematic. Basically every scene in Little Britain is uh, a punching down you know it's, it's yeah, like that's picking, true. it's picking yeah. a minority and going isn't it funny how those people are different than us you yeah know? so like it's terrible and I, I feel bad almost for laughing at it but I used to be rattling off every character from Little Britain uh, so that was a lot of fun um, I could do Stewie Griffin you know so um, oh, do well. a little bit of Stewie there well not <laughs> so bad that's, that's, that's okay and some other Family Guy characters but um, other than that I feel like I'm not as sharp as I used to be I wish I could just mm. throw them out you know I could do, I'd say, about 10 different accents from Ireland, but I don't think that would be lost on the majority of our wow. listeners, unfortunately. Uh, we have a lot of regional dialects. Yeah. Unreal. I can do, you know, for example, I could, for example, move to London, for example, and become some kind of a politician. I could do that. Oh, I'm choosing not to. Would take you in. I'm, I'm, I'm choosing not to. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's, it's, it's not, because that's not even just accent. That's also <laughs> like the dialect like yeah the, exactly. and the, 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 words the music move. of it you yeah know, how they talk so i love that how politicians talk in particular but, but you're also good at doing the impersonations of the politicians love themselves that. love those yeah. yeah who do i have actually i don't know i can't remember i don't have a good trump i don't think I well used, it, yeah. it was there's so many great trumps out there, there now, there's so a lot of good ones out there the problem now is i just end up copying them yeah. you know you were you were uh, a bojo for a while i, th- I think no i don't no, I never had a bar i wish i did yeah the stammering around of course. Well, yeah, frankly, yeah, that kind of, uh, yeah. I, I think anyone can do that if you just cut yourself off enough times. So like, well, I don't, for one night, but, you know. Oh man. Um, no, I need to sit down and make a list of the ones that I can just confidently crack out. You know, because that list is quite short. But yeah, maybe I could make you it did, longer. Actually, you did it live on the podcast without intending to on the Everest episode. Yeah. You did an Obama. My legs oh, hurt. Yeah. My legs hurt. <laughs> I don't like where my legs feel. <laughs> Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of problems with my legs right here. Uh, that is actually that's quite spot that's on. All right, yeah, I have to say yeah, you've yeah. nailed the American and the president. And then, that. But that's his speech voice, which is like, yeah, when he does podcasts now, he's all like, yeah, you guys wouldn't really know about this, but you know, he's like yeah, yeah. way more down. He's a lot more chill. But when he's giving us beat, yeah. you know, yeah. cutting himself out, and you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Well, but, he's uh, de-stressed a bit over the. You the can last well few imagine, years. yeah, you he aged about thirty slept years. Slept a bit, you know. Yeah, yeah, he had a rough, rough four eight years, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, Jeez, but yeah. here we are. I promise next time, whenever this comes up again, I'll have a few more in the tank ready to go. I'm just blanking right here. That's but, all they um, want. That's, that's all they all want. the listeners want. Yeah. And having mentioned uh, President Barack Obama, the, the 44th president, I believe mm-hmm, he was, mm-hmm. of the US, an avid listener of the podcast. We actually uh, exchange podcasting tips. Sure did. Be like Mr. Obama and give us a five-star rating on any app of your choosing. It really helps to grow the podcast. Tell all your friends. And write to us. Let us know your postulations. You can tweet directly at Neil Fitzpatrick, or you can tweet at 
in postulation. You can probably tweet at someone called Neil Fitzpatrick. It just won't be me because uh, I don't have Twitter. But uh, yeah, you, you can definitely tweet it at inpostulation on twitter.com. You that didn't is, purchase uh, a blue tick from Elon? So tempted. Your account? But actually it was Elon who was like the nail in the coffin where I said, okay, I wasn't into Twitter before, but now I'm definitely not into Twitter. Maybe I shouldn't be trashing one of the only social media platforms where we actually have, you know, a follow-up. provides but, growth. Uh, but yeah, 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 sure. Why Thanks not? Thanks for that. There we go. Uh, Mixed feelings uh, about the old social media. But um, no, I think uh, Elon is handing over the torch pretty soon, I think, to someone else. So. Yeah, I think uh, he's he's seen some sense. Uh, a bit yeah. difficult to be CEO of... Uh, three or four companies at a time, right? It turns so, out that's hard. Yeah. yeah. Who would have thought? Who would have yeah, thought? Yeah. And uh, we'll come back to Elon in an episode in a couple of weeks when we touch upon our big bets uh, oh, for this year yes. and review all of those. So that'll Absolutely. be quite fun as well. Looking forward. Looking forward. Yes. So, Neil, today what we've decided to do is give the listeners what they want. And what they want is full mundanity. They do. Shockingly enough. Yeah. One of the things that we started almost well, fell into accidentally on episode one, where we were like, well, we need to, we need to find something to start with. And we did. Christmas and music. Ex- ex- and that turned out to be one of the most divisive ones at all, of all. But funny enough, the things that generate, at least in my, in my experience, the most reactions from our listeners seems to be the mundane ones. Yeah. Where people come with their strongly held opinions. And come at us and just absolutely don't hold back. It's uh, shocking. It's amazing. We love it. And we're leaning into it. So without further ado, let's, we're going to get into a full episode of mundane postulations. Here we are. Good Lord. I'm excited. I just can't wait. Well, hit me with your first one. Well, sir, without further ado, we have a, a couple of topics that I'd like to get into today. The first of which, of course, is, uh, is around texting text messaging we do a lot of texting we do a lot of uh, interchange of texts main form of offline communication exactly online communication but one of the aspects of texting that has kind of gone up and down in waves over the past number of years i feel is the use of emoji and i say Mm. using the proper plural of just emoji right apparently you're not supposed to say emojis yeah if i look briefly at our text with each other we are a non-emoji space right yeah i'm just scrolling up here and our entire interchange it consists of text images links and the occasional wordle very serious that is yeah you could say right you could say it's very serious but then again it's just kind of it varies by person right because then i can pick another chat say with my brothers for example or or something like that right and it's emoji central for me you know i'm i'm dropping the emojis as much as anyone else right so all all of this to say Mm. i don't know if anyone has like a hard and fast rule where they say i do or don't use emojis right and i without wanting to preempt your answer having just kind of talked about how we text right what is your feeling on emojis emojis i was quite late i think to the emoji game i don't think i actually started actively throwing them in my uh in my texts or my WhatsApp threads, maybe till five years ago. I think part of that was actually the ignorance of how to enable the emojis oh, on my keyboard. Literally the, the which steps is, of... Yeah. I'm really coming across as a boomer here. Um, <laughs> yes, you are. Um, and then there were so many, and I was receiving a lot, mm, and mm. without the context, I didn't know how to interpret half of these. You know, yeah. what is the smirk? What is the, the crying laughing versus the... Uh, cheek squeezed laughing you know mm-hmm, all of mm-hmm. this there, there were a lot of subtleties and i didn't really want to bother going through all the reddit threads to understand whatever mm-hmm. the, the parlance of the youth of today as mm-hmm. we like to say on this podcast so i have a few in the wheelhouse which i use okay. um which i used and then what happened was actually uh on iphones at least i don't know if on other things when you would write a word that would correspond to an emoji it would propose that emoji so then i started using them more as a result of that yeah having said that it's also true that it depends who i'm talking to and i don't know why so with you we're a non-emoji thing it doesn't mean we're not cracking jokes within it but it's like the wavelength is without emojis with my wife on the other hand I'm sending the heart emojis and stuff like that. That's fair. But only to her. I think she should get right. them rather than me. Right. Yeah, to be fair. Yeah, that's you don't right. want the, the little kissy one, but that's fair. <laughs> that's uh, fair. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a weird thing. I think there's also another aspect on the keyboard, which we'll get to, mm-hmm. which actually you introduced me on where to locate that mm. again here. The old international... Uh, the the yeah. GIF. The oh, the GIF. GIF. Yes. Because yes. I think having the GIFs... Sometimes I go through phases of that where I totally neglect the emojis and I'm, I'm all full gifts. on yeah. gifts. I yeah. love the gifts. Because where I'm at now is like, I even just go for a punt on a gif. I, I go like, 
there may be a good gift for this. So I put in, right. I put in a word that I'm hoping to get the vibe of yeah. and something absolutely banger comes up <laughs> that I would never have thought of, you know, that's, that really makes your text extra, yeah. extra special. But on the emojis part, I'm kind of with you as well. I think that unfortunately now, I and many people of my age have aged out of mm. the zeitgeist emoji usage. And I had to go looking for what it is, but kids now are using emojis in a completely different way. Right. And there's some amazing articles out there summarizing it. A couple of just random examples off the top of my head. The skull emoji. Oh, yeah. That means laughing. At, that means funny. Apparently. Because yeah. I'm dead. I'm, I'm dead from yeah. laughing. So, but to me still, that's like so, so that's strange. That's a bridge too far, man. And looking at it, yeah. you're just like, no, this, this doesn't feel right. The heart emoji now is used by Gen Z's as a sarcastic um, joke now. Okay. So imagine, and a great example is, say, imagine if you texted me saying, hey, could I borrow your uh, squash racket or mm -hmm. something? If I texted back saying, no, heart, and that's okay. the message, that's how the Gen Zs are using it now. It's like this, it's for this like sarcastic way of saying, eh, no hard feelings, not, you know, like it's, it, wow. they're thinking in layers of abstraction that so we don't. So it's like, no, but I still love you, or it's, no, it's like, like, no, but I'm taking the piss out of you? It's like, no, and isn't it funny if I also add a heart to be kind of like, I'm being, wow, okay. I'm being an asshole, but I'm also being nice. Kind of, you know, like they have yeah. this like whole weird sense of humor, wow. Gen Z's. I don't think we have many Gen Z's listening, so we can't request many postulations from them on this. But yeah, I basically feel that I've aged out of the emoji market. It, it, it dawned on me when my younger brother, nine years younger, said to me, um, yeah, that laugh emoji is so boomer. Like the, the crying the laughing. Crying laugh, it's like that's really? boomer now. Yeah. yeah. Like well, my uh, dad uses it. So yeah. yeah. But we we love that. That's you know, uh, yeah. that's classic. Yeah. But in any case, my my usage of gifts, I, I'm with you there. I think that's that's the place to be. And I think emojis, we need to be careful not to you know lean on them too hard. You mm -hmm. know, that's my only my yeah. only thing. When I first started dating my my now wife. And we were texting a bit, you know, and uh, it was in the early early stages, right? So. Mm. Mm. You're testing out the waters yeah. with the humor. Finding you're not your so, level. Yeah, your yeah. groove. You're not yeah. so unhinged, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time, it was like a milestone when I had to send her my first gift, right? I was like, oh, oh here we go. I got to make her laugh, right? Yeah, I got to yeah, do yeah. all of this. Yeah. And I remember spending, like, mid-conversation or something, spending, like, a solid 10 minutes, like, searching for the relevant gift or Ooh, whatever. 10 is big. And uh, it's huge, right? And I, and I sent her one. I don't even remember what it was. All I remember was her reaction was like, your gift, you really got to up your mm, gift game. And mm. I was like, ooh, okay. But that's when you, know? you knew because yeah. it's someone who will give you the feedback and say, hey, Constructive. I'm going to help you grow together. Yeah. That's the kind of relationship you want, <laughs> that right? was it. And it all came down she to She didn't the have gift. to say that. Yeah. She no. could have just said, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Moved on. Or sent no. a skull emoji, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. If she was a Gen Z. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. My God. Yeah. But yeah, emojis. I feel like they're here to stay. They're built so, so much into our phone keyboards now. Mm. And as you say, they pop up as a suggested text now. Yeah. Yeah. We use them a bit in our episode titles, actually. If you look at the country roundups, we've been yeah. throwing in the flags. The so, flag, I mean, yeah. that's not without their merits, I yeah. suppose. To draw the eye a bit. Yeah. There's something else, though, too, now that we're on that tangent to this, mm. in terms of how to communicate via text, mm. is that a lot of people are foregoing the text altogether and doing the voice notes, the voice memos. Yeah. What are I, your thoughts I had on that? This, yeah, I had this in a in the same list of, of topics for okay. today if yeah. we got to it and yeah. that, so perfect like uh i'm a big fan of them and i'm even more of a fan of them now that you can you? speed them up yeah because yeah you can i used to be when when you had to just kind of power through and someone sends you a four minute and you're just like or, oh, okay here we go it's like a podcast yeah exactly yeah. and it's like a podcast you haven't asked for like, that, <laughs> exactly. that you, you need to listen download. to yeah exactly but the great thing now is uh even the most um, slow talking of friends can be tolerated now through True. through voice notes because they are going to send you a voice note which is like hey hope everything's good and then you just have to like <laughs> double and triple it up and then it's like hey how everything's good with you I had a few questions for you the first question is going to be you know mm -hmm. and you can get through it it's like watching a, a, a TV show on double speed you know it's easy um, so I'm okay with it then and it does give you as a, as the sender it gives you a lot of freedom to just go anywhere with it, you know? Mm. You can drop in a few jokes, you can kind of make it your own. Yeah, I think it, you can add a bit you of like spice it. to it. Okay, I didn't know that. Only for certain things. Like, okay. for example, imagine something weird just happened and it happened 10 seconds ago and you're just wanting to send a quick summary to the person, mm -hmm. whoever. Mm -hmm. I find that instead of going, oh my God, I'm texting, you like won't believe the what happened, crazy no. thing just happened, I was going down the blah, blah, blah. You can just hit the hit the microphone button yeah. and off you go, right? Mm, mm. Uh, in Ireland, it's huge, uh, or it was at least when I was still in Ireland, that viral voice notes were a thing. 
Oh yeah, where you would have it like the one I showed you from a few years ago, the uh, Kosamui <laughs> Cup in in Ireland. For anyone who doesn't know, maybe Google that. Actually, you'll probably find. Shout out to the Arc Bar, Arc Bar Legends of Kosamui. Uh, <laughs> so. It, that was a viral voice note that was sent by a guy to his WhatsApp group of lads of probably yeah. about 30 guys. <laughs> and one of those guys, I guess, forwarded it to someone and then they found it funny, even though they didn't know the person. Right. And then right. it forwards and forwards and forwards and it ended up coming to me various ways. Yeah. I sent it to you, I think, at one yeah. point. But this is a thing of like, it's almost like an audio meme, you know, mm. if such a thing exists where like, just like a, a funny picture, it was a funny voice right, note, right. In that story case, that yeah. a guy was telling, right? So they are big, they have their place. Then again, you, I can, I hear your hesitancy because I guess it's the inefficiency that gets you where you're like, don't make me sit through this, you know? Yeah. I think the inefficiency is part of it. The, the worst part though, for me is that the overuse of it. So I'm not always in a situation where I can have a voice note. Mm. If I'm texting you in the moment and we're ping, pinging back and forth on text, mm. I expect a text back. Yeah. I'm not, you know out in the metro or something and just going to play your voice note out loud for everyone. Ah, but did you right? know you can actually just hold it up to your ear and it will play it through the the phone uh, earpiece? Yeah, but I still, I don't like yeah. that. Yeah, okay, it's not ideal. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if I'm texting you, just let's stay on text. If not, I'll call you. Like, legit. Okay. If we're pinging back and forth on voice notes in like, real time, mm. let's call, right? Okay, okay, fair. No? I'm a never caller, basically. Like, uh, yeah, I think our generation was the first never call generation, yeah. even when it comes to work matters, which sometimes literally yeah. creates a mess. And I have to do it sometimes for work, and I'm always hating it. It's just like, uh, yeah, why? I, and FaceTime, no, pro- like you know, yeah. video calls, no problem. I'm just saying the old phone to the ear thing is so. Uh, I'm done. With it. I don't. I don't yeah. want to do it. Yeah. I think our generation was the first where even like, you know, my pa- our parents' generation would be to call the restaurant to seat one more person or something would yeah. legitimately call them and would tell us call them yeah and we would just shoot an email shoot yeah. a text online booking go, online booking uh, anything before the call right exactly. which is quite well, funny if you think about it because yeah. it's the most efficient thing to do way more call. way way more but when i lived in portugal that was the, the done thing as well mm. so it, forget about online booking like for even for popular places in lisbon it was either call for, if like physically hi i'd like to book a table for two da, 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 and they'd go yeah one sec like so inefficient like it's the worst possible way uh, but that was the only way or else you just mm. show up and they're like oh we'll see what we can do but many of the restaurants i frequented were just like without an online right. system altogether so i guess it varies a bit by what part of europe you're in as well luckily here in copenhagen i think there's it'd be hard to find a restaurant that doesn't have an online booking system but no exactly yeah. i think and and most of them use the the same one as well yeah so, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah i love that one yeah, yeah. awesome Book a table. Book a table. There you go. No more calls. But yeah. very good. That's on the topic of uh, of texts Te- all so around. What have we covered? So we're talking emojis. We've been talking voice notes. Gifts. We've been talking gifts. Don't forget the gifts. Communication in the age of uh, yeah of TikTok. Yeah. Now, in terms of the the gifts and emojis mm. in a professional setting. Yeah. When do you get the the feeling that like okay mm. now now it's okay you know to throw yeah. out a cheeky gift or Oh, yeah. I a think cryptic emoji. Yeah, the gifts, I think, can, if they're chosen well, they can be the absolute cherry on the on the, on the the cake. You know, okay. like, it's the thing yeah. that seals the great, like, you've had a great chat with someone, whether they're super senior, whether you're, whether they're, you know, just new in the company, whatever. It's like the gift can be the icebreaker, the thing that just makes it all good. However, I have seen some pretty horrible gift usage as well, where it's just badly chosen, or it's a little bit like a serious topic, which has been, you know, gifified, and then it's right. like, oh, uh, maybe not actually. Like, mm. this is quite a, you know. So you do, I do think you have to be very careful. And then also on the, on the same topic of like professional environment, emojis, you have to be very, very careful of too. Mm. I, yeah. uh, I got an email even today um, from an external contact, and it was a little bit sassy. The text was a little bit sassy, mm. but then the emoji was a smiley, emo- just a simple smile emoji. Ah. And that pushed me over the edge. <laughs> you know, it's, right, like, it's pushing me over ah. the edge. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I, that, there's moments and times and places for them. And I feel like the work environment, you can maybe just dial it down a little bit. That's, dial it that's down. where I'm at. Yeah. yeah. There's a guy called Jack Stratton, who's the, the main uh, musician in a gr- group called Wolfpack. Mm-hmm. And his rule for business emails is all lowercase, no punctuation all the time. So all lowercase, even the first letter of the first word. Everything lowercase. Okay. And he's like, I know it sounds crazy, Mm. but bear with me. When he shoots an email to some absolutely massive big name to who who wants to collaborate with, and that guy opens his email and it's all lowercase, super quick, casual formatting. And he's like, hey, 
wondering if you're up for doing a track together let me know blah blah, blah. Mm. all lowercase super chill he gets way more responses actually with that than if he sends the fully formatted like hello sir it is great to hear from you my name is do i would right, love to, right. you know. the template so i think there's a lot to be said for that like about flexing your style okay. a bit and knowing yeah. when to go high when to go low count but I'm I'm just saying for me emojis are probably where I draw the line on most emails. But you said no punctuation, like pretty like just maybe a simple full stop here and there. Okay, but okay. none of this like uh, comma new line, you know, none of that stuff. Just okay, like wow, hey, what's up? We should do a track together. Blah blah blah. You know, it. Uh, right. I think it has a place maybe more in the music industry than in like any other professional probably uh, right. Workplace, it could right. be frowned upon in other settings. Could but, be, but and it could be seen be? as disrespectful. Yeah, yeah for right. sure. But then again, it's like if you're mailing someone who you feel is on a very different level to you, who is maybe mm. 10 steps higher than you in whatever industry, it might be the great equalizer to actually fire away a really casual email and right. just be like, hey, cool to do the catch up sometime. You know? Putting you on the yeah. same footing. You may get a little bit of who do you think you are sending me this email, right? <laughs> but then if that's if that's what you get back, then... At least it's a I reaction. Know. Yeah, true. Think how many emails yeah. go on answer. Yeah, it's like marketing. There's no such thing, thing as a bad publicity, right? Yeah. Well, there you go. Exactly. Good. So... Let's take a quick break on that bombshell and then we'll come back with more mundanity for our listeners. 100%. All right. Welcome back, listeners, to Full Mundanity here featuring Neil Fitzpatrick. Now I have something for you. We're going to turn up the mundanity, I believe. We're going we're gonna to really turn up Whoa. the mundanity. It go. doesn't get more mundane than this. Before you head off in the mornings, mm-hmm. I assume you brush your teeth, uh-huh. right? Yeah. And before you go to bed at night, I assume you brush your teeth. Sure do. Potentially, you know, when you have it available, you even throw in a midday session, right? Wow. Uh, less so. But yeah, go Potentially, on. Let's, let's right? say, yeah, they don't need let's to say maybe. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's recommended yeah. by some yeah. dentists, sure. not by all. All right. Now... I'm interested very much in your process of brushing your teeth. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking yet electric or static, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about how you put the toothpaste on the toothbrush. Oh. And what you do with it before it goes into your mouth. Okay. So I'm going to withhold the electric or not status for now. Yeah. Just to keep it consistent. Yes. This is a scientific method here. So... I am holding the brush in my left hand. Is this the direction you, you wanted me to go? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Start moving towards the sink part. Let's. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Uh, dry brush, toothpaste onto the bristles directly. On a dry brush. Okay. Not much. And I would say a pea-sized amount. Okay. Maybe a pea and a half. Like okay. not, But we're not talking, because I heard other people talk about this recently. I'm not doing the big swirl that you get on the ad, you know, like the big right. massive yeah. long chew like the big snail or the big slug that people no, they put then on. you buy twice as much exactly in a year it's a scam so we don't do that it's all about the pea-sized amount right yeah. then i add cold water on top of that cold water on yeah. top of that just give it a just to kind of get it warmed up and a get, little give, spurt. It, give it something to kind of foam when it gets in there right? okay yeah then i'll come back to whether or not uh you know we can we can expand on there but that's when we begin the brushing and then it's into the brushing it's in, yeah. okay I feel like that's straightforward, though. Yeah, that's 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 straightforward. Okay. I do almost the same. Okay. But I wet the bristles first. Oh, pre breath. Then I put the paste. Okay. And then I do a little wet again. A double. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one is to kind of maybe get whatever little residue or whatever is there, prep, soften the edges a bit. Got it. Got it. Then you put the paste. And the second one is to avoid ending up with a clump of toothpaste somewhere on me right because it pads it down oh yeah tamps right? it, tamps it onto exactly. the bristles the, okay, exactly. i hadn't even thought of that that yeah. wasn't why i did it because why i did it is if you don't do that you go in just with the paste it's it's actually not going to foam it's not going to you mm. know lather to the same extent right. so i hadn't even thought about the, the tamping down process right. but that's a big uh-huh. part of it because i've had so many shirts with toothpaste on them that's that i realized a, halfway through the day yeah and you you would blame the lack of water on top for that I would say that there is a high correlation. Because mm, I think that could be careless brushing. Not not to cast aspersions That's here. That's disrespectful. I'm just saying that there's, just multiple, root, there's multiple root causes for this. We need to do a wow, full okay. root cause analysis. And I, I think potentially not wetting the, the toothpaste has played a role historically. I also think that brushing technique may have also led to some, uh, some mishaps along the way. 
So you're an electric brusher, are you know? I am. I can't. I was. I'm delighted. I got the chance to uh, to spread the word. So I not by choice actually. So mm. what happened was got one uh, free just as a yeah. as a gift uh, randomly one time, and I was like, sure, I'll give it a try. And it's an Oral B um, Sense IQ something something. I don't really know the oh, full thing. Damn yeah. endorsement deals here. Yeah, now. exactly. And you know, I have to give them a shout out. It's uh, it's great. So why is I it know great? It. I've you used it. it. You know. Yeah. yeah. So why it's great is it does thirty seconds per quadrant of your mouth, and it oh, vi- wow. and it vibrates after each thirty seconds. Oh, right? that's really advanced. So yeah. So al- already what it does is guarantees you're going to do two minutes because. When you are doing the old fashioned stone age, you know, brushing, mm. the only person timing it is you in your own head, you know, like mm. you don't, you're not getting any feedback yeah. unless you're going to get a stopwatch out. Nobody's, nobody really does I used that. to have the little sand thing as that a would, kid. Yeah, yeah, that would do it too, right? <laughs> but I can tell you that when I was on the old manual brushing, I would probably be cutting a few corners. Like mm. just whenever I get bored, I'm like, right, that's that done. Mm. If the whole mat feels good, you know, yeah. whatever. But then with this Philips Oral-B one that I'm using, uh, you don't leave the top left until it goes, bip, 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 you know? Like it does a little interrupted um, right. vibration. Okay. And then you go over to the top right, etc. You compartmentalize. Yeah. And you guarantee your two minutes. So it's like, uh, there's many other features to it that I don't yeah. use. You can get like a map of your mouth where it says which parts you cleaned well enough. Mm. It changes color based on your um, pressure. And if it goes red if you're pressing too hard. So also it avoids you doing any damage to your gums. Okay. So like, really, it was uh, quite a shockingly good thing. It's, I don't think it's too expensive, but where they get you is the refills. So mm. the brush, yeah. the bristles go after like a few months and you have to buy the re Like with the fills. razors. And yeah. then you're talking like 20, 30 euro for the freaking bristles. Yeah. You know? yeah. And there's not even any electronics in the bristles. It's just a magnetic thing. No. So you're re- the margin on those things is probably absolutely sick. That's but, brilliant. Uh, they've got you and uh, you're hooked. So that's me. I'm an electric guy. You're uh, not an electric? I've been an electric guy actually oh, for right. many years. You were tired. Uh, at yeah. the time it was recommended to me by a dentist. Yeah. I've always had some gum issues issues which is very annoying because mm. i never smoked a cigarette or anything in my yeah, life and oftentimes that's where you get like look at the draw i guess yeah. Yeah. yeah and um so they had recommended similar oral b not as advanced as yours because maybe mm. it wasn't there yet okay on the market mm. um but then i tended to overcompensate and even with the soft bristles mm. uh, just brush hard. super aggressively super hard oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. and just like concentrated in certain spots that then I was moved to the ultra soft manual. Ah, okay. uh, so just just that's where I am now. Save yeah. you from yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But Jeez. now that I think about it, how often am I getting it as two minutes on the dot? I would almost guarantee you're not. Right. And you might even think you are. And you might even count it in your head and say, that was two minutes for sure. Yeah. And you'd be shocked. Because no. sometimes I am brushing and I'm like, how? How is it still not two minutes? No. Like, like two minutes in a, in a meeting, two minutes goes by like in, in nothing, right? Yeah. But for some reason, you're just kind of. Stuck there. There's and, no uh, other distraction. Exactly. But, you know, then we'll have to do the research, of course. But mm. my assumption then is that most people don't hit two minutes yeah. most of their lives. Mm. That ends up being hundreds of hours of loss of brushing over a 100%. lifetime, potentially. Yeah. How important really is it to brush for two full minutes, do you think? This is the thing. I mean... I don't, but the dentist always says, oh, everything is looking great. I wish, I wish actually we could do a deep dive on this because when did toothbrushing even start? Like it can't mm-hmm. in in our in our history of, as a species, it's probably in the last like one percent of our time on Earth that we started yeah, doing it, right? Geologically so, speaking, yeah, something sure. like that. So we got this far with that. Is what I'm saying. Right. Now, of course, we did start eating a whole load of sugar uh, in mm-hmm. the past, say, you know, two hundred years or so. So it, it kind of makes sense that we're now more prone to things like cavities and, and decay, right. etc. Right. And also, I think the the level of expectation was probably also different 200 years ago or 300 years ago where people would just be walking around with like half a mouth full of teeth and they'd be like yep that's me like you know they don't it just wasn't like it wasn't the the thing that we expect now true, true. and especially if you look at the US now and the way that uh, celebrities are getting like, severe like bleaching or, or teeth whitening done to the point where it's like blinding when they Even smile the average joe in the u.s oh yeah it's, but it's, it's so crazy. affordable yeah. it's so accessible but yeah. to me it almost looks kind of too much it's yeah. a, it's like nobody actually nobody's right. teeth are that yeah. color naturally you know um then again like the, the uk has a has a reputation for being terrible on oral hygiene and yeah it's like, they get a lot of flack for it is it yeah. always justified um i would i would struggle to say actually because I, mm-hmm. I don't have any data to support either way <laughs> what i do know anecdotal. is that yeah anecdotal but then then again like 
any um, any country like the UK where dentistry is not, I believe, covered by the NHS, as far as I know. Same right. as here, right? That it's right. it's not seen as healthcare in most universal systems, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah. It's it's rarely ever, I think, offered by the government. Right. Or at least some in some places, I think it's subsidized. But in Denmark, mm. it's just like, <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah, exactly. you're on your own. Yeah. Uh, in those countries, I think it probably is more likely that people do neglect it just because it can be an absolute whack. Like mm. I I got a I got something done recently that has made a serious dent in my savings just right. just from having yeah. not through no you know, just through a pure you know but they're still wealthy countries and in the yeah. u.s you certainly don't get it covered by no no true. you don't have you know insure i mean you have your insurance from your employer or whatever exactly. sometimes they'll throw in dental but yeah exactly but i think the standards are higher in, in the u.s I think. yeah it must that be everybody has a, a pearly white you know like uh yeah and if you don't it's kind of like ooh, what's wrong with that yeah. guy i guess i i'm speaking as someone who's literally never lived there so like i can't even begin to postulate then again that is yeah. my job here that's what uh, we're here for on this here podcast <laughs> so yeah forgive me but um it is an interesting one and i haven't gone down that road myself I haven't researched that no. but i know that uh it, the wise person would be leaving countries like this to do it elsewhere you know yeah, if you wanted absolutely. to get some some kind of procedure done you're probably better off going to uh, i think hungary is the place to go or something like that yeah, yeah a lot cheaper turkey maybe yeah, yeah. i had friends uh, that would be from serbia for example living somewhere else mm. and they would go back to serbia a couple times a year to do their dentistry and it cost dental them tourism. an as much exactly. dental tourism it's a thing it's the future it's like the it's hair the uh, hair transplants like uh oh, this, yeah. this flights to, to turkey i believe that like are full every day of guys with their heads bandaged because They've all just come back from getting uh, plugs done or, yeah. or hair transplants. I yeah. think very little can go wrong with a teeth cleaning. Yeah. A lot can potentially go wrong with a hair transplant. For sure. Still, right? It's a traumatic process from what I hear. Um, and yeah. from how it looks too, because yeah. apparently it kind of has to like oh, the first while, fall yeah. out again and then yeah. it comes back, but it doesn't come back as your hair was previously. It's mm. almost totally random is what I've yeah. heard. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of put off by it a bit, even though like... The, the alternative is also not great, which is like eventually just going bald, right? But, but that can look yeah, good. Bruce you know? Willis. Like, like Bruce on, Willis. If he yeah. can, anybody can, uh, yeah. can rock it, you know? It actually can take years off in a way. That's oh, what I saw with my own, no my own dad, actually. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I think once it goes and you're like, say, 30, you're going to look that way for the next like 20 years, probably. You know, with a right. bit of the occasional wrinkle here and there. Right. But like, I think people would genuinely have a hard time, you know, placing your age in that, uh, in that bracket. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot to be said for it. Depends what you have underneath, though, and that's yeah, always true. been my thing head of shape, like head shape. Yeah. Wh- when I'm when I am gonna shave it, who knows what's underneath there, right? And again, I mean, Huge birthmark or something. I don't yeah, know. true, true. But then again, it's like you know you can't control it. Like no, it, exactly anyone who's gonna anyone who's gonna criticize for that, it's like okay, I literally couldn't do anything about this. Like, you know, it, yeah. you can criticize people for lots of things where it's like, uh, I don't like their dress sense or whatever. Yeah. But like literally the shape of someone's head, it's like kind of, <laughs> it's it's not something they can take away and be like, cool, thanks, not thanks for the feedback, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I think that's probably one to just take and be like, yep, that's, that's it. That's yeah. Me. Fair enough. Fair uh, enough. Back to the dentistry yeah, though. Geez, uh, another kind of bluff that you, that I've called many times at the dentist is mm. the flossing one. Oh Yeah. You just show up yeah. and be like, no, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, or they're like, are you flossing? Oh. And you say yes. And, and they're, they're like, like, I can, I can see tell. that. Yeah. 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 And yeah. it's like, oh, I got you. I think they're trained though, to say that because I've had this as well. I had one, uh, went for a checkup and the hygienist was like, yeah, I can see you're you're really doing your best, but you're just not able to get to some tricky spots here. Right. And I was like, nobody yeah. can until they come in. Exactly. To exactly. The dentist. And I was like, that's a very nice thing to say. Like, as in, <laughs> I, I bet she says that to all the patients. Yeah. You know? But uh, <laughs> so potentially you got uh you're getting the nice treatment, right? Yeah. They, ultimately, they want you to have a good time. Like yeah. their business is you coming back, you know? Yeah. So they want you to have a nice time while eating as much sugar as possible in your day-to-day life. That's like the dentist's uh, win, 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 the dentist's right? dream. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was a bit skeptical of like nine out of 10 dentists recommend, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, if it was terrible, they would recommend it because it's like, that's good. That's what's going to get you coming back, you know? Who is the one out of 10 that doesn't recommend it? He's the, the good dentist. dentist. He's yeah. the one who's like, it literally stops any cavities and I can't recommend this. It would put me out of a job, you know? I need to recommend the bad toothpaste, if anything. Yeah. We should be skeptical of these toothpastes that are recommended by dentists. Wow. Incentives. Wow, now you're onto something. Incentives are aligned. But it's super powerful. When I see the label with the special tooth sparkling and like yeah. recommended by dentists, whatever, mm. Mm. I'm much, much more likely to pull that one off the shelf than the one without it, to yeah. be honest, without even looking at the price probably. Shocking stuff. I find it a bit of a minefield. I kinda I, I'm sure it's it's very easy if you work in that, you know, industry. Like if you work right. for one of those companies, you probably think it's dead simple. But for me, just standing there in the aisle 
trying to make a choice between this one, that one, this one, that one. And it's like, this one is white plus, this one is professional white sensitive, yeah. this one is white professional sensitive. Yeah. You're just like, can I, it's like, which one is, is the good one? Like, you know, and, and the prices are all over the place and some of them are on special. It's just like, ah, oh, come on, I can't, uh, can't be dealing with this. No. Don't like it. No. What about mouthwash? No, I think it's a scam. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's just, it's like. Shots <laughs> to the industry. Yeah. Uh, I think like, it's one of those things, isn't it? That somebody had a very smart idea where a product didn't exist and they were like, could we pay, could we get people to pay to buy our our water? Or Mr. Like, uh, Listerine, he, yeah. that was actually his name. List, oh, I was his name. There was a guy Listerine. called Listerine way back oh, geez, in the day. Jeez, it sounds yeah. so chemical, yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, it, it's just the type of thing that somebody, some marketing genius comes up with and actually launches and gets it to work somehow, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And I don't think there's many dentists who swear by it. Right. And if you Google it a bit online, it's like, the effects of mouthwash are unproven but it can't hurt like right. in, in theory it will freshen your breath if that's what you want you know like nobody's like out and out saying it's an absolute must must have and i just feel like okay if it's not a must have it's an extra 30 to uh, 30 seconds to a minute that i don't want to have to do every day i right. did i did try it for a while and i liked the freshness of it yeah. you know like the real yeah. it really like blows out the the mintiness and, and you really like feel it but like mm, is it worth buying it every as part of your you know regimen yeah know. and that's kind of the thing I'll have had it for periods of time. Yeah. And once I run out of the bottle, yeah. it's like that, maybe another that. two years and it's like, oh, yeah. maybe I should try it again. Because it but doesn't now, occupy that headspace of a must have. I don't walk past right? it either. I, wherever it no. sits in the True. in the aisle, I just, even when I get to paste, I don't think it's that close. It's like, no, maybe not. It doesn't pass your eye line at least. Right. So actually, now that you asking me about it now is the first time I've thought about it, I'd say in like three years, probably more. Yeah. I haven't had it in a long time. But now that you mention it, I kind of do. I wouldn't, like, if someone gave it to me now, I wouldn't say no, but I wouldn't go and buy it, you know? Yeah, fair. That's where I'm fair. at. Fair. Yeah. When it's there, though, you take it, right? If I'm visiting someone yeah. else and they have it, I'll be like, well, yeah. give that a go. Let's try <laughs> that out. <laughs> Check the flavor. Yeah. And they've had their issues as well, right? So I don't know how it is now, but the mix used to be, like, fairly heavy on, on alcohol, alcohol, right? Yeah. And yeah. some people were using that, you know, for to indulge. Uh, I think if you yeah. make ethanol available... In any in any container, somebody is going to buy it and try and drink it. One know, way or another. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. And I mean, it is a bit of a nightmare product, especially if you have kids, because yes, they do have a safety cap where you need to, you know, squeeze it Push and turn it or, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But I, you, what, do you need to be taking that risk, you know, with a kid who could potentially yeah. figure it out? I'm but like, also, yeah. a kid, like, I was probably able to start opening those when I mm. was six yeah, already. Exactly. It's still not healthy for me to drain a bottle of mouthwash at six. Exactly. Let's just and I'll probably that. still do it, like yeah. if I unscrew the safety cap. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think uh, those two things like go hand in hand. Yeah, just because someone is old enough to know how to use a safety cap doesn't mean they're old enough to knock down a bottle of Listerine. <laughs> to restrain, yeah. right? That is true. Yeah, nah, not a fan. I think basically where I'm landing is let's let's not uh, let's not do mouthwash. Yeah, let's not do mouthwash. Let's keep brushing for two minutes with this special brush. That, yeah, or will be. I think Oral there's B. a few. There's one that Philips do one called Sonicare. I'm trying to give like a shout out to yeah. different ones so I'm not, you know, biased. <laughs> uh, but if any of those brands would like to sponsor us, please do. But um, no, I think it's, this is the way the world is going. The only problem I have is I sometimes find myself saying the crazy phrase, I need to charge my toothbrush, which you know, mm-hmm. it's it's one of those post uh, post apocalyptic crazy phrases that represent the time we live in now. You know, I need to charge my toothbrush. I need to. Yeah. My toothbrush is dead, and you can't really use it when it's dead because it's it's actually quite a small bristle head yeah. on the electric one. And it, if you revert to manual brushing from there, it will take you years. That was an issue I often had. Is at some point I would run out. Yeah. And then I would do it manually with an electric toothbrush, and it's, it's a not cool. it's not a recommended by nine out of ten dentists. Certainly not by me. Yeah. No. Very good, Neil. That's on dentistry all around. Wow. Um, I have it. a few friend dentists, actually, that uh, may or may not be happy with this, and we might oh, need damn. to invite them on later. Shit, I had I known. Oh, yeah. my God. After all that uh, nonsense I talked about, 9 out of 10 dentists. Yeah, jeez. Yeah, and actually, shout out to my friend dentist, who I won't mention, that mm. I found out was it's... giving my wife discounts, oh. but not giving me discounts. Oh, oh, oh. damn. I... Huh? Damn. Yeah, that's borderline racism right there. Because like, if that tough. person is Danish and then you're not, Danish, this is this is scandalous. We're we gonna call them out. We could go to uh, extra blooded with this. This is like I, mean, uh, I think we could go to the European Court for Human Rights. I think so. This is this is uh, yeah, this is show trial stuff. We need to be doing the Geneva Convention on this. You yeah. see, exactly awful stuff. Call them out. Good. So, quick break, mm. and then we come back with a little 
something something. Well, part and shot. All right. Welcome back, listeners. Now, before we go, a parting shot of basically as mundane as it gets. So a couple episodes ago, or on the last episode, I don't even remember now, so many, we discussed Google reviews. And part of what we discussed was that Google reviews are there for so many things, Mm. not just for your hotels and your restaurants, right? Basically, if it exists, it has reviews. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we decided to introduce a little game, which hopefully will become part of the lore in the upcoming episodes, where we find something very mundane in a random part of the world, go to the reviews about it, filter them from lowest to highest, read out some of them, and see where the postulation takes us. Yeah, let's see. Let's strap in. This is a new segment, guys. Yes. So uh, let's see what happens. So, Neil, coming to you from Cardiff in Wales. Oh. Texaco petrol station on the outskirts of town. Which town? Oh, Cardiff, we said. Yeah. Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, coming from the Wales. Only. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go uh, ahead. Yeah. You like Wales? Uh, actually, quite partial to Wales. Yeah. Your favorite part of the UK? Yeah. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Snowdonia. Beautiful. Uh, you can go to the world's longest train station name, Langvar Pilgrimger, blah, blah, blah. You know, it goes on for like... Uh, Fantastic. Yeah, amazing. Sorry. The Prince of Wales Do himself. Go on, yeah. um, so here we are. From Jacob. This is a petrol station, remember. Okay. Gas station for uh-huh. the Americans. Uh-huh. Very hard to understand fuel locations. Most of the pumps are out of service. Very old pump. Very hard to get out to the main road due to the signal in front. That was a one-star review. Jeez. A couple more quick ones here. But he here. found some legit uh, complaints, yeah. though, in fairness. Then we have Serbulent. What? Old pumps. Uh, oh, that's the name. Sorry. Yeah. Name. Yeah. Uh, old pumps. Hard to figure out usage. Okay. No chance to pay at pump. Don't oh. use this station. There are many other modern stations nearby. And finally, one star from Fiona. Don't use the cash point at this garage. It takes your card and your money. Oh, no. Staff not interested in helping. Ah, oh, Texaco. Texaco. There, this is not going to last. I'm sorry. And it, it's, it is when you when you filter like this, and the three reviews all say basically the same thing. You know, they, they they're are, on okay, to something. Yeah, yeah, the pumps are old. Okay, geez, but like. I feel like on top of all of those complaints, I bet the vibe is really bad there too. You mm, know, yeah. just like you come in and you're just like, oh, nothing's <laughs> good about it. Nobody wants to be here. The staff hate it. You know, like right. I actually would lo- I really want to visit it now. I know I can't, yeah. but like, I just want to see for myself. You we'll know? put it on the list for, yeah. for our tour. I mean, we have the address. It's on my Google map now. Next time I'm in Wales. Yeah. Um, and one of these guys, Jacob, yeah. has done 95 reviews yeah, in Cardiff. Yeah. So he's got kind of that orange star by his name. So it seems to be a credible source. He knows his stuff. I wonder if he's done any other petrol stations. But in any case, this sounds like an absolute horror show of a petrol station. Now, very old pump. What, what do we make of that? Is I wish that a I fair knew. feedback for a petrol station? I feel like as long as it works, you can kind of keep that to yourself. Like, sorry. But if you, if the thing fills your car with petrol, that's... that's kind of does the yeah, job, let's right? Let's call a spade a spade right. here. Like, uh, you're not here to, to have, like, you know, a streamlined uh, automated filling service. That doesn't, you know, right. doesn't exist. So, <laughs> at least not that I know, but for, for, for petrol... Not in Wales. In, in Wales, yeah. Or maybe in Wales, because so, that's their expectation. Yeah, apparently, yeah. As some of the users, Jacob in particular. But I think... That that is a, a little bit harsh, I think, on his part. But then his review goes on to name another of other complaints, which are a little bit more kind of justified. Hard to find your way out. Hard to fill up. Like hard to uh, figure out. Can't pay at the thing. I thought that was the next review. But yeah. like the, the the paying at the pump thing. Come on, it's twenty three. You know, like yeah. I don't know when he left that review, but that is it's high time to start paying at the pump. Like um, the only one I have something to say about is very hard to get out to the main road due to the signal in front of me. What is, yeah, how the, the traffic light. To get that wasn't their decision. Like they, if, if he's talking about a traffic light, that's the, take it up with the commune. Yeah, that's, like, that's city planning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrong, depo- wrong review. Text, and it's for your own safety, buddy. So like, don't, uh, like, sorry for trying to keep you alive on yeah. the road, friend. That's uh, yeah. a little bit harsh too. Some respect, huh? Also, also, the, as we're on it, the cash point, as yes. the third reviewer so kindly mentioned, has nothing to do with the Texaco. And okay, they may not be interested in fixing it, but it's also not their cash point. Point. Like the bank, they, they're not allowed to fix it. Probably, right? Absolutely, they're doing the bank a favor even having it there. 
okay maybe maybe it's a mutual principle there and the bank is happy to have like they're happy to have it there right right because it brings customers in or whatever but no of course the the employee is not going to be like right let me crank that open for you let me just crack the atm open that i have no responsibility for and get your card for you because it's so important to you when in fact the bank has a clearly documented process of who you're supposed to call when your card gets swallowed you're supposed to call them up you get a new one it takes like three days you'll survive those few days everyone has apple pay these days anyway yeah I think, uh, what's she even using cash for? Sorry, as well. Is it 23? Come on, Fiona. And she's using cash. And Come she on. lives in a major metropolis. I yeah, mean, this Cardiff. is part of City. This is bloody Cardiff. You know? Yeah, we're not talking Millennium about... Millennium Stadium. Uh, yeah. yeah. Middle back in nowhere. So actually, you've, you've kind of wound me up here as we, <laughs> as <laughs> we, we get going. Circle. These are a little bit harsh reviews. Like, I do think they were probably... Uh, like a uh, one star review is never just about the facts you know there's also an emotional element where it's like there's i need be. to land a punch here i want to i want to do something bad to this business you know so i bet there's more to the story and i bet the staff were pretty bad about the atm thing, yeah if i can if i can dare uh you know postulate as to as much yeah but still you're right there's a few elements here which are a little bit suspect yeah. now zooming out for a second if you hadn't partaken in this conversation and Mm. you happen to be on holiday in wales having rented a car needing to go to a petrol station Mm. would you read through the google reviews of the nearby petrol stations before making a decision i I probably would but i wouldn't change my opinion as if i would i would find the nearest one and i go oh it's 2.9 how bad is that and then i would go through and read them but the only thing that would send me away is if they said like it's a scam like they're charging they're charging you literally double or whatever then i'd be like right well we're not going there but if i know i can get through this ordeal get a tank of petrol and pay a reasonable pay like amount for it then i'm like okay the pump might be a bit old there might be a traffic light next to the road but like you know we'll survive i'm not going to use the cash point so i think i I would check maybe that's a bit odd yeah but i would it wouldn't change my decision i would just be kind of intrigued yeah yeah i think we've actually come out a bit more leaning on the side of texaco and helping them out a bit yeah which doesn't feel great does it like you know that we're siding with big oil here but (laughs) in any case uh maybe let's say that it's a draw uh the the jury is out and until we go there ourselves we can't say for sure but some of these complaints are a little bit yeah a little bit out there sorry to say maybe they're having a bad day let's yeah. give them the benefit of the doubt so listeners if you find yourself in cardiff just remember that there are many other modern stations nearby where the pumps the are easy to figure out apparently yeah. because that's and, a thing yeah and the atm doesn't eat your card because probably there's not an atm at those yeah other and come on does it eat every card or, or did she maybe get unlucky sorry okay i'll stop oh, i'll stop we'll never know what atm does that okay anyway sorry yeah. uh but, there you go fiona wow. Not your friend, huh? One star review, Monday and one star reviews is up and running officially. Yeah. As this a, is this is going to be something, listeners. We're going to be back yeah. with this, uh, Neil. Any final words to our friends and listeners in Cardiff or anywhere else in the world? I wish I could say something in Welsh now as a as a parting shot. That's uh, a project for next episode. I guess my only parting shot then is, uh, hey, why not send us your favorite one star reviews too? There's probably some good ones out there that I haven't seen. So if listener you are aware or you find any great one star reviews, please do hit us up. Because because there's something special and amazing about them. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, Neil. And until next time.